the bookseller crow on the box. Tales from an empty bookshop. Action. Hello. Hi. Hi, Evie. <laughs> Welcome to Bookseller Crow. Thank you for having me. Yeah. <laughs> I can't believe you're here in real life. Um, welcome to the second talk in Talks from an Empty Bookshop and we have uh, tonight Evie Wild all the way in an Uber from Peckham. Uh, first time you've been out isn't it? It is. It's so very exciting. We're really honoured that you chose us to come to um, Up the Hill and um, we have a very small select audience tonight so the the bookshop isn't quite empty but what you, who you can't see is Jonathan and Justine and their daughter Willa who is our technician and my partner Minnie is sat in the corner socially distancing of course so if you hear any um, laughter that's them um, but here we are to talk about the base bass 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 <laughs> there you go <laughs> this is not rehearsed <laughs> say that again bass like the fish bass right the bass rock i see i always yes mess up names anyway <laughs> there we go we're here to talk about the bass rock and um really um we're going to talk for about half an hour aren't we, we are. we're going to answer some questions about it but first of all um i thought you might want to read a little sure. from the wonderful book that it is. <laughs> so I thought I would read from the beginning so I don't have to explain anything. Um, so that's it. I was six and just the two of us, my mother and I, took Bowie for a walk along the beach where she and Dad grew up, the shore a mix of black rock and pale cold sand. It was always cold, even in summer we wore wool jumpers and our noses ran and became scorched with wiping on our sleeves. But this was November, and the wind made the dog walk close to us. Her ears flapped, her eyes squinted. I could see the top layer of sand skittering away, so that it looked like a giant bedsheet billowing. We were looking for cowrie shells among the debris of the tide line. I had two digging into my palm, white like the throat of a herring gull. My mother had a keener eye and held six. I felt the pull of victory slackening. Resting in a rock pool was a black suitcase, bulging at the sides. The zip had split, and where the teeth no longer held together, I saw two fingers tipped with red nails and one grey knuckle where a third finger should have been. The stump of the finger, like the miniature ham I had for my doll's house. The colour had been sucked from the knuckle by seawater, leaving just a cool grey and the white of the bone. It was the bone, I suppose, that made it so much like the tiny ham. I moved my arm to swat something away from my face, and as I did, flies rose from the suitcase in a cloud, thick and heavy. Behind me, my mother, another one, she called. I found another one. And then the smell like a dead cat in the chimney in summer, a smell so tall and so broad that you can't see over or around it. My mother walked up behind me. What? I kept looking at the fingers and trying to understand. My mother pulling me by the arm. Come away, come away, she said, and spitting over and over onto the sand. Don't look, come away. But the more I looked, the more I saw. And peeking through the gaps between the white fingers was an eye that seemed to look back at me, that seemed to know something about me and to ask a question and give an answer. In the memory, which is a child's memory, and unreliable, the eye blinks. Ooh, oh, what an opener. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> the suitcase is right from the start. We have violence towards women. Mm. Um, and a woman in a suitcase. Um, and throughout the book, it's it's... Um, quite uh, well let's just say I found the book there's a sort of anger mm. that's very well controlled about this uh, perpetual 
um, violence towards mm. women. It's got a high body count, a book. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I haven't counted. Um, and I um, wanted to know how whether you started the book feeling angry or whether the your anger as a writer sort of did blossomed in a strange way as you wrote it I think that's a really nice way of looking at it the blossoming of anger because I think it's a really positive thing mm. um, so I just had a baby so I probably was just livid all the time <laughs> um, but I think um, you know we were talking earlier about the the first two books I wrote which are kind of around the same subject um, the first one is set in Australia and it's about men and how they interact with each other or, or manage not to. And um, and the second one's about a woman living with um, a, a difficult past. And, um, and I think with both of those I was trying to get towards, um, more towards the Bass Rock, I suppose. Um, which isn't to say that I finished the Bass Rock and went, there we go, done it, I can mm. retire. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it definitely felt more like what I meant and what I meant was um, you know that anger is there and it's important and it's a force for good and um, you know that it's a it's a very dark book and like I say it's a, there's a lot of death and a lot of violence and um, but ultimately I, I look at it I felt hopeful writing it um, <clears throat> partly because in the middle of writing it, Me Too happened, and that felt like this incredible wave to be on, that there's all these women saying, I'm really, really angry, and um, and I didn't know I was allowed to talk about it. Um, and the power that comes from women sharing their stories. Um, and that was essentially what I wanted to do, just share a lot of stories. Um, the suitcase, in fact, is a, a real story. I didn't discover her, but... Mm. Um, a woman was dumped just by where, where my grandmother lived in a suitcase and I I kind of I found some details about what happened to her and it was just the most mundane kind of she'd kissed someone else other than her boyfriend in a club and so he had strangled and burnt her and you know there were weird details in it like she had mango for lunch and things like that and just this idea about this woman's life and it just ends up in such a small contained bit you know um, mm. so I wanted to open the suitcase I suppose you certainly opened it <laughs> and explored it um, it's brilliant Evie I, I personally you, found it I think it's the best book you've written Thank so you. far I did enjoy the first two very much but um, yeah <laughs> In my humble opinion, um, it flits back and forth between three times, mm. put it simply. Um, I think that's part of it, it, part of why I thought this is a bigger book than the previous mm. two because you've become a kind of ventrilo ventriloquist mm. of different um, times and also different um, characters and. Um, you have the contemporary time which is largely set in London and also around near the Bass Rock um, that was right wasn't it goodness me I'm nervous of even saying it now um, <laughs> which is um, near the Firth of Forth mm -hmm. so you had a link you have a link with that mm. rock don't you is it to do with your grandmother yeah North Berwick which is just the coast the bit of coastland um, is where my great aunt used to live and we used to go and have um, really like weird Easter's there freezing cold <laughs> and on the beach and tar and oily gannets and stuff and um, and she had this huge house which is now split into three I think like mm. really grand rich lady and um, and it's the house that this is set in mm. and when my grandmother and my father died I inherited my grandmother's photo album and there are all these pictures of my dad in a little horrid woolen swimsuit as a little oh, boy soggy. Um, <laughs> on the beach with the bass rock in the background and you know I have exactly the same photographs of myself yeah and it sort of had this weird 
this weird sort of echoing through time feeling of that you know the only thing that is the same is that rock mm. um, yeah and and the the rock is yes obviously much has been there before that house mm. and of course the um the one of the other um times is um pre-house mm. wood when it was just woods and mm. uh and there's a um, character called Sarah who is, I think she's accused of witchcraft, mm. isn't she? Mm. But the witchcraft sort of follows through with um, the contemporary Scottish Maggie. Mm. And she's a sex worker slash witch, I've written in my notes, <laughs> which is, uh, a, a, you know, it's quite a thing to be. I, well, I think, yeah. <laughs> but that's what I loved that there was this witchiness about it um which sorry i keep saying witch and witch (laughs) 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 sort of strange Tourette's um yeah and i i loved the viv character as well and viv is the uh contemporary character who is who goes up to scotland and has sort of looks after this house or is 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 given this role because she's um She's sort of, I don't think she's having a breakdown, but she's just certainly Mm. um, going through troubles. Mm. And she um, befriends Maggie, and I think that was a a very powerful um, combination. And also, uh, uh, people have likened it slightly to Fleabag, Mm. which I want to talk about in a bit, uh, and the sort of lazy terminology that gets bandied about a bit at the moment. But... um, where, how did you approach these three timelines, I suppose? Mm. Mm. Did you write, did one come first or? Well, what I was doing was, um, I, as I said, I just had a baby and so I was in a bit of a sleep deprived kind of mess. And mm. the only time I had to write was when he was asleep. So um, I just wrote in his naps and that meant that I didn't have time to really sit there and pontificate and think about what am I going to write today and Mm. I just had to write what was at the front of my mind Um, and what was at the front of my mind it turned out was all this horrid stuff (laughs) and actually there are a lot of other timelines and there are these little intervals of like um, murders or or a run up to a murder um, throughout time um, that come I've forgotten how it works now, but coming like every four chapters or something, mm. and um, and I had, you know, I have about sort of thirty of those left over, um, and I was just writing. I guess, like you were saying, like the the anger was kind of blooming out of me a bit, and um, one of the one of the kind of places I was inspired. I hate that word, um, but really affected by was this um there's this australian journalist called sherelle moody and she's made this interactive map of australia and it's called the red heart campaign it's got all of these little red hearts all over it covering it eclipsing it and if you click on one it will tell you about the body that was found there of Mm -hmm. women and children killed by men and um for the most part i mean some of them is unknown but the The thing that was astounding was the amount of unknown female bodies. And she tries to put up, if she knows who it is and knows some of the story and who they were, she'll put up a photograph and like information and if the guy was caught and all that sort of stuff. Um, But it just, it started to feel like, um, you know, this huge unwieldy thing. And, and And really the, I think, Sarah's Strand, the witchcrafty bit um, in the 1700s, felt like the right place to start because it it started to feel like witch hunting hasn't gone away. It's just changed its name slightly, mm. changed shape. Um, but the the idea of you know a domestic violence killing um, and the the thing that gets said is it's an isolated incident with no further threat to the public. And it's like, it's not. Mm, mm. <laughs> it's um, yeah. It's like a it's a pandemic of, you know, different kind. Mm. 
topical. Well, yeah, <laughs> totally. A, it's the pandemic within the pandemic, mm. yeah, isn't it? Especially at the minute. Yeah. At the moment, I mean, they, yeah, I'm sure we've all seen in the news how badly um, any any thought was given to mm. what would happen to people trapped yeah. inside their houses with violent yeah. partners. Um, well, it's interesting, actually, um, some of the radio that I've done in Scotland since lockdown, I've had calls from the producers beforehand to say, can I know that's what the book is about, but given people are locked inside, can we steer to the lighter side of it? You know, and yeah. it's like, God, yeah, like the having to think about people sat there, I mean... Yeah. Yeah. Well, we, maybe we should steer to the lighter side just for a moment because it is very funny. Okay. Um, I haven't got any examples, <laughs> but I because <laughs> I'm not that well prepared. But um, I um, there there was a great um, where have I got here? Oh, gaslighting. Sorry, not that's not the funny bit. Uh, <laughs> we'll come on to that if we've got time. Um, well, the sort of opposite side of. Well, because there are, it is, it is very, that there are real moments of 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 your wit shining through in in this. So um, I wouldn't ever want anyone to think it's a, just a, a, a totally dark um, ball of you know uh, anger. Um, but the, the I'm linked to laughter is the tickling mm. scene, mm -hmm. which is a not funny scene at all. Mm. And is possibly the scene that has stayed with me ever since. Mm -hmm. And because I think um, you captured something, and there's a strange vicar in this um, story, which I now think every every novel should have a, a an awful st strange vicar. Yeah. And um, <laughs> but I don't think it's the vicar that does the tickling. It's mm. just a particular scene on the beach mm. um, where you maybe question whether tickling should actually be allowed mm. anymore mm. Um, because it's and I don't know obviously you've been tickled and I've been um, but to the point of where it is um, where you feel helpless yeah and I think that's what you captured and there's that it, you took something that was so that that, that, that came across as abuse mm. um, that we would think is fun mm. you know that mm. everyone thinks oh yes you just tickle someone children. until they yeah. cry yeah um, and you do or it to children yeah and yeah. exactly and yeah. it's a real sort of so it's a power game mm. and i hadn't ever i feel like it feels to me very closely linked to choking i mm. think because it, somebody takes your breath mm. and they overpower you and you know that thing of being tickled by someone who you know is going to be relentless but mm. not my husband <laughs> um, we have uh, me and my son both have a safe word for tickling. I mean, he wouldn't ever tickle me, but because, <laughs> but um, if he is tickling my son and he wants him to stop, he says sandwich. Right, and it's like, <laughs> yeah, that's hands <laughs> off. And I think, um, like, we kind of started doing that from the moment that he started enjoying kind of roughhousing and stuff, and and I just felt it just would make me panic. Mm. to watch it because it's like he can't get breath to say mm. stop it I mean it stop. Mm. and it's one of those things again where there's always somebody yelling stop 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 and the person mm. not won't stopping stop and laughing and yeah but to put this in Hi. context I it is a it's a um the uh, strand which is with Ruth and Peter and they are set um, that is set in the um what is it the post 50s yeah post yeah. 1950s and it's I think it's all you know the Ruth and Peter strand is is also just so vivid and Ruth's interior life and she's alone in this house by the Bass Rock she gets roped into a kind of strange local custom of a hide-and-seek mm. um, game on the beach where all the women have to go off and hide and then the men come and tickle them mm. and I mean you would think that sounds like a really good day out but <laughs> for me well for us who haven't been out for a while it's the most horrendous thing one of the most horrendous parts like and almost that feeling yes you're right you know it's 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 the opposite of, mm. of uh, 
of how well, of how it goes too far. Yeah, I think um, you know I'm not like tickle phobic or anything, but I like when I was about fourteen, two male friends of mine tied me up and tickled me, and they did nothing else. And they were really nice boys, <laughs> but they did tie me up and tickle me for ages. <laughs> and I was just like, well, what am I supposed to like? I have absolutely no power in this. Yeah. I'm tied to a chair. Um, and and it just, it has always stuck with me. Yeah. It's like, what, you know, again, very nice boys. Did I'm sure they didn't mean it in any um, weird way, but it was weird. Mm. Um, <laughs> and there would be absolutely no comeback, you mm. know, mm. to feeling violated by that. There's mm. not, there's another scene in the... Uh, Viv Strand, which is like present day, where her, her and her sort of the guy she's seeing, have just finished having sex, and he tickles her, and she she sort of gets a feeling that he's morphed in something else, and she gets very upset, and he is kind of angry with her because he's just like after after I fuck you, you're you're going to accuse me of tickling you. What you know? What is that? How are you? Who's going to take any notice of that it's um mm. yeah no one <laughs> yeah no exactly um but the yes sorry i shall just uh, you throw me with the tickling <laughs> <laughs> yeah don't touch me um going back to um flea bag and that was all happening mm. whilst I think you must have finished writing it by the time Fleabag no, came I think, out. No, I was think... On TV, I mean, it was obviously around because it was a theatre yeah, show. Yeah, no, I think it was... I think I... I think I'd watched it in the middle of it. Yeah. I'm sure it influenced me. Like, I, th I think she's brilliant. Yeah. You know, she's obviously a brilliant writer. Oh, she is, yes. Um, and the way that she portrays... Uh, sisters is so interesting mm. and so um so accurate mm. um you know so many friends of mine with sisters are just like it's like watching us mm. interact yeah um and i think that's what's amazing about it it is you know it's funny and it's mad and everything but it's also just incredibly accurate mm. yeah yeah the investment of how how um how your relationship can sort of turn on a, on a word mm. sometimes mm. Um, but the that a lot of people or, or a lot of reviews have likened the book to a sort of cross between Fleabag and sometimes mm. Ali Smith mm. and sometimes another well-known writer mm. and I, I find it's it's called comp mm. comp lit or something or comp it's something yeah. the book book um people do and I just I just sometimes find it a bit lazy because it doesn't really doesn't quite get to the nuance of your mm. of your writing I think or the or really the, the sort of unique quality of it so I was thought if you could describe mm. how um, you might um, reference your own work it, how, I think it's what, really it's it's sort of um, it's tricky isn't it because you know it's just like being a person. You, mm. you think of yourself as something, and everyone else sees you as a very different person. But, but I suppose, like I, I can think of like the places I go for, um, for help <laughs> mm. when I'm writing. And um, with the first book, it like quite weirdly, Chuck Palahniuk was really helpful. Um, partly because he was the first writer that I read who really picked apart the writing process mm. and he introduced me to Amy Hempel um, who is now somebody that I go back to again mm. and again just to see how um, quickly mm. she does stuff and how beautifully and how few words she uses. You you introduced me to Amy Did Hempel I? and I was because I said to you I want to just read really short things mm. What's the shortest short right short yeah, story writer? Short. <laughs> and it's just incredible. Yeah. yeah. And it has that saying she has like you will get a lot, pack a lot into a sentence and almost 
create light within the sentence through obviously your your the way you, you word your sentences are, are brilliant That's nice. um, yeah I would really I, I stared at one of your sentences earlier <laughs> quite <laughs> some time <laughs> thinking about what it does that it mean? was the last sentence actually <laughs> <laughs> of the book it's, um, <laughs> downstairs oh we shouldn't give it away mind you it's not really a <laughs> a reveal, is it? <laughs> Downstairs, the soft closing of the door. I forgot that. And I was like, "Wow!" Anyway, it doesn't quite come. <laughs> doesn't quite come across. And then a bunch of stuff happens before. <laughs> yeah, loads of loads, loads of things happen before the door closes. But the way the order of the words, I suppose, your mm. emphasis is yeah. is so um, like a short story writer. Mm. Um, I think. Well, I think I um, I started writing short stories. And I, n I never had any sort of pretension to write a novel. And then somebody said, would you write a novel? And then maybe we could publish it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I definitely, uh, I don't know, I don't like saying learn to write because I don't feel like I have learned to write. I've, I've, I, the books I've written have taught me how to write them and really sadly nothing else. Um, <laughs> but I feel like starting off, with short stories is helpful because you look at every word and you look at every space between each mm. word and everything matters and, and that's only going to help in a novel because you know you, you can you can see the bits where a novelist has gone and blah 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 some stuff and you know get to the bus blah 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 blah, blah. yeah and and how um how that isn't necessary how you can jump like film um you can just jump to scene. I, mm. I really like that. Mm. You do jump. You you do, do. jump in. <laughs> um, yeah, you're writing this. Are you right? Am I allowed to say this? You're writing this for screen. I haven't signed anything. All oh, right. So we'll just. Edit I may that be bit writing out. it for screen. <laughs> <laughs> we won't tell you who. <laughs> Sorry. No, it's mm. fine. Uh, I'm okay. sure it's fine. Yeah. I just don't know. No. Well, it's in perhaps in the pipeline then. Yeah. Um, I think it, um, I can really imagine it. I saw the, um, what was that film we saw with the clitoral rock scene? <laughs> Portrait. <laughs> Portrait of a, of, a, of a Lady on Fire. Oh, I haven't seen that. It's, to yeah. it's the, that, the beach, anyway. Well, if you need to have, if you... rock instead. There's a, <laughs> there's a clitoral rock scene on the beach and I just could see that perhaps happening mm. with a bit of hide and seek sort of shaped around anyway I don't, I'm not giving you ideas um, this is not a workshop <laughs> so um, in your opinion this is just a sort of lighter question because um, I'm really interested in knowing this from people of who you think has a dream the dream career um, whether it be a writer or a uh, or, or someone else not a non-writer it's just I was doing a workshop, performance workshop, mm -hmm. the other day, and one of the first questions was to try and help you hone your of where you wanted to go yeah. in life. Yeah. It was who you think has mm. the career, maybe you might hanker after, or even if you absolutely can't do that career. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My, I think my ideal would be an illustrator. I'd love to um, be able to um, do my own graphic novels. Right. Um, I did a graphic novel with a friend of mine a graphic memoir and and it was really kind of just like I want to be able to do the drawings but I'm really shit so <laughs> um, I everything is teeth yeah 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 um and I I started it when I was about 14 or 15 I desperately wanted to be a um painter but I was really bad at painting <laughs> I was all right at drawing but um it's one of those things if you stop doing it every day it, you very very quickly lose the hand eye kind mm. of coordination and um the few times i've tried to get back into it, i'm just like Ugh, mm. feel can't. rusty yeah do you think that's the same with writing um. uh yeah i think so i think um you know you have those lovely um calm months when you don't have a child and you just have all this time and you're writing every day and 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 it kind of starts to roll and I think I've really found I mean I've I've only just started writing again um, and 
it does feel incredibly rusty and like oh where do I start and you know all of the all of the questions that I, I teach at um, uh, Kent University and all of the questions that my students ask me about like well what do I do to get going I'm like oh, I don't know so let me know <laughs> <laughs> uh, no idea at all so yeah it's weird yeah it's probably the best answer yeah I think you do have to keep your hand in mm. I mean I, mm. I don't know if you feel physically pent up if you don't do it yeah Cause but sometimes the sometimes I it's like there's a perfect point to burst that and sometimes I find if I don't write I get more and more pent up and then I'm able to write a lot of usually very angry um, <laughs> stuff and it but it you know you, you can when it's something that's been a long time in percolating mm. and I don't mean that I'm sat there thinking of plot or characters or anything that I'm just sitting there with this horrid sort of feeling like months. Um, and when I was a teenager it was um, that I can remember I would get it and I, I used to um, self-harm a lot because it was that feeling and it was like something needs to pour out but I didn't know about writing so mm. it's kind of now it's kind of a controllable thing and and I know that you can do a creative thing with it mm. Mm. yeah TMI yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thank you no no not at all it's interesting <laughs> that you talk about the, the moths feeling mm. um, so you have a moth and I I don't have moths, no. I just feel really <laughs> suffocated. Mm. But I used to think that was something to do with being gay mm -hmm. and being on dates with men. But I realised mm. it was more to do with <laughs> writing and needing to express myself. Wow. Um, but the... So so you're writing something new or you're just... I'm just, like... I've got, like, 1,500 words of something new. Yeah. I don't know what it is. I still... Like, I finished writing this about a year ago and I'm still very much in its headspace and I think possibly because the other two books felt like a sort of run up at this one part of me is a bit like you know am I just going to write this forever or is that the end of writing but I doubt it because mm. it's it's about women's lived experience and that's what I am doing being a woman and alive Yeah. Um, so I suspect it will go on in a similar vein mm. <laughs> <laughs> and there is a real I mean do you do you feel part of a real movement of of writing in a particular way sort know. of would you see yourself as, as a sort of feminist I definitely see myself as a feminist because you know I I don't know a woman who wouldn't no but um well, I do, but let's not talk about that. Um, <laughs> but um, but I'm, I don't... I don't think I am... It's hard to say this without sounding like I think I'm dog shit, but the, mm. I feel like to, to give yourself the label as like a feminist, right? I feel like I would have to be a lot cleverer. Mm. Like, I feel like that is an academic... Mm. kind of you know um Ali Smith is a feminist right I feel like she's like the she's able to articulate herself um to people about feminist discourse whereas I would just be like I don't know I I'm mm. interested in stories but the stories I tell her about this mm. that sounds a bit weedy doesn't it but um, no I'm and that's it's strange because I wouldn't yeah, I, I, it's. I don't think people come out and say that I'm a feminist writer the mm -hmm. same way that they wouldn't. You know, it's it's sort of ingrained, isn't it? Mm. I think if you, yeah, it's, they're not. It's not about being a scholar. No. Um, but no. there's certain what I feel, and I hope it doesn't um, go, is that there's a there's a surge of, for me, hope mm -hmm. within writing, and Black Lives Matter mm. and. Um, all, all these, uh, this, these movements that will just, just you know, and I think there's, I sometimes, I was saying to Willa earlier that I can hear a kind of 
groan and wail of a certain men mm. who are like oh no why you know <laughs> what about me yeah and yeah. i just can i mean I, that's probably my imagination yeah. unless it is real i don't I know if you've heard it, it. <laughs> <laughs> but, but it's not that but i think there's room enough for everybody is what yeah. i'm saying i don't think one has to replace another yeah. and there shouldn't be any sort of bemoaning no. of anything and i'm no. sure that's just my imagination um yeah but not in a not in a like all lives matter way. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh no! I suddenly see the, the the dead end corridor I'm going down, and I'm going to pull. Okay, well, um, I don't know how long we've gone on for, but I think we possibly um, right at the end. So um, thank you so much for coming, Evie. And um, yeah, we're going to have signed copies, and we're going to have a. I'm going to have actually a little bit of film of you signing one, I think. Ooh. But also, um, we have made some sausage rolls for you. So, so um, you can also buy these at the Bookseller Crow <laughs> and, and Cheesy What's It. Um, so um, just ask for those with your book, and uh, John will uh, provide. <laughs> but thank you very much, Evie. Thank you. thank you so much for coming. Thank you. Welcome to the second um, talk from talks from a 